Tom Panos, John McGrath, Troy Malcolm, we are back for Million Dollar Agent, the podcast that is approaching 200, Troy, correct? Is approaching 200. This like is number said it one one last. Huh? 200 podcasts, over a million downloads. What else? How many podcasts have we had? 106. Mm. This is 163 or 160. No, That's not approaching no. 200. Troy, I, I suggest That's that while we're doing this podcast, you bring that up right. because I'm pretty certain that we are up to somewhere around 175 to 180. Let's bet. And I'll be corrected. Yeah, no, I'm, so, wor- I'm worried about false advertising now. We okay. can't say approaching 200. What did you say? 175 to 190. I think 175. What, am I right, Troy? No. How much? 162. Come on, let's do six. So 164, we're going to do okay. six today. So thank you to all our listeners and now our viewers, because this is uh, one of the uh, very few times. And we have not really touched, very quickly, John, your team is not going that much better than the West Tigers. Oh, please, go okay. on. Okay, we haven't touched on football. Oh, I mean, we've got Sydney teams in the AFL doing really well. Nah, the Swans well. are on fire. Right? Swans are on fire. Swans are what are you talking about in my team? Yeah. That's why I go for the Swans, big time. Well, I'm... I, We've any, won the last nine in, in the row eastern, or something. Eastern Gosh, suburbs. It's extraordinary. <laughs> well, actually, on the Swans, the Swans, what a great success story. Turn zero around. from six, a turnaround this season. So, they, hang on, they lost the first six. Yeah. six zero so from six. So, it's like six. losing yeah. six listing presentations. Yep. Yeah. And, and now they've back. won, what, nine out of ten or something? Yeah, some ridiculous number. They had a draw with Hawthorne. Or Doesn't it show you, though, You can, because you know, put in our industry, you could lose six listing presentations, and they literally turned their season around. Yep. And I'm sure it was mental shift. Yeah. Same players on the ground, but just of a different mental attitude that wins nine of the last ten, but lost zero of the first six, yep. or lost all of the first six. So, uh, yeah, interesting. But I think, uh, yeah, we're in a rebuilding phase, like the Tigers. Mm. And uh, <laughs> Well, John, I've, I've, got, I've got to say, look, as far as I'm concerned, because I know that we're sort of second last or down the bottom, I just get as much joy as watching other teams in Sydney that I don't oh, like, that. don't do well. That makes me oh, happy. Well, since we moved to Melbourne, though, Troy and I have got a very soft spot for the Melbourne Storm. Troy, you, you like correct? the Storm, don't you? Storm, like storm. Troy is now based in Melbourne much of his week and doing yes. a fantastic job with our team there. So yes, hello, that's, Melbourne uh, team. That's very much our second team, isn't it, Troy? Please, Storm, Troy. absolutely. <laughs> you storm. like the Storm? Well, I just think... And Broncos, they, they, of they course. Have, they have a belief structure. They have a trust in each other. And it, you know, if you look at the Queensland origin result a couple of weeks ago, yeah, the spine was made up of the Melbourne Storm team. Did I send you, because mm. we need to send Tom and get it on your website, that there was a LinkedIn post around leadership, right. and, and it was, and obviously I didn't, because you're looking no. at me funny. Yeah. There was one of the best little snapshots, and I'm pretty sure it was on LinkedIn, but I'll find it and we'll get it on your website, Tom. We have to. And it was a fabulous story of Melbourne Storm, their approach to, to it was a bit like reading about the All Blacks, right? Right. Mm. And uh, the stuff they do, the way they approach it, the way they work their players, the expectations, demands, preparation. So I'll get a copy of that. You can hold me accountable. So that's an, that's an article or a video? It's a, a short podcast, uh, no, um, written. Yeah. Written. Um, it's really good. So I'll, I'll get that and I'll send it to you and, and Susan, Beautiful. Susan or Judith could maybe post yeah, it. Absolutely. We will post that. Guys, let's do Q&A. We've got two questions. Question number one, uh, anonymous. Why do vendors treat me like shit? Okay, I can understand why, why this uh, author of this question is remained anonymous. Why do potential vendors treat me like I'm no good? They ask me questions. They ask for my opinion. I keep them posted with info and recent sales. And when I call them, they don't even bother to answer. They just list with another agent at the end and I get no feedback. So he's very upset, I can tell from the tone of this question. So you don't? Or yeah. she's upset. So, so, so the first thing is, um, generally your world reflects the value you're putting out there and I think you've got to take responsibility. If people are not returning your calls, they're not choosing you as an agent, you can blame them, you can blame competitors or you could take responsibility. One of them is going to get you a great result, which is take responsibility. So um, my encouragement would be to work out, however that is, what are you doing wrong? Yeah. Because clearly, my, my, my first thing, Tom, is people got to like and trust you and connect with you, in which case you open the floodgates. Anything's possible. If you arrive and people don't like and trust and, and feel that rapport and connect with you, I've got to tell you, it doesn't matter how good a salesman, uh, how mm. good mm. your product knowledge is, you're not going to get the listening. So I would say to this uh, reader, listener, yeah. uh, writer, um, it's, it's something you're doing is not sitting well with the clients. 
because most clients, when they like and trust you and they feel good and they're in the mode of buying or selling, they want information, they want connection, they want to work with you. So if they're kind of putting up the shutters, it's something you're not doing right. So shift the internal. Yep. You agree, Troy? Is that oh, I would say go back to building rapport. How are you building rapport with these people? Because that will create trust and they will respond better to when you're leaving messages for them and they will return I actually, th- th- this, this person, I'm not trying to be rude and, and I can be very open and honest because we don't know who they are and we, we haven't said. Um, why do people vendors treat me like blank? Um, it's kind of a bad way to approach the whole thing. Yeah. I mean, even I can see in the way they're writing, there's a, there's an attitude problem in the way they're writing. If they wrote and said, Tom, John and Troy, you know, I'm struggling with the fact that I just think I'm doing my best, but I turn up and I do a great pitch and I follow through and I think I'm adding value, but I'm finding a lot of people are not connecting with me. I'd really love some tips on that. But this is kind of a semi-aggressive, blame the other person yep. approach. Victim. Yeah, so I, I look at this and I'm saying, I can see before I've even thought about it, I can see the problem because the problem is in the question. The answer is in the question. Um, so that would be, and I'm not meaning to offend, by the way, because someone out there is listening saying, shit, that was my question. Yeah. Please don't, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking to offend. I'm saying take responsibility, get rid of the anger, um, really do a good self-assessment and... Uh, I, 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 yeah. Potentially ask your sales manager as well. Like if you have the trust with your sales manager, maybe sit down or go for a coffee and say, listen, this is the way I'm approaching this listing or this is the way I'm approaching yeah. this potential vendor. Well, Troy, this is how you would do it. Troy, as you know, a lot of our sales managers, well, it's meant to be all of them, but I think the majority of them, when we miss that, a listing, they call. actually ring up yeah. the vendor and say, Mr. Panos, look, best of luck with your sale. Thank you for calling us in. We really appreciate the opportunity to pit for your business. Disappointed mm-hmm. you didn't choose us, but that's our fault, not yours. Um, could I just get some valuable feedback so we know what we didn't do right? Yeah. And part of our listing presentation, the best one next time is because we're hearing feedback. From Mr. Panos is saying, well, one of them was, um, you know, your guys came and pitched for me one night and a couple of other agents did. The agent I chose got back to me by 8 a.m. with the submission. Your guys got back to me at 5 p.m. the next day and I figured they were either too busy or not that interested. So I went with the 8 o'clock person because they all looked pretty close. Yeah. So that was time. Mm. So, you know, you've got to get back to people more quickly. What's the second one? Second question. What are some of the fastest and best ways to re-establish yourself in a new area? I have moved offices within my franchise group and therefore have no past sales history except my Facebook page. And that's from Anne. So that might have been meant to say establish yourself. Yes. Re-establish says yes, they're going back. Yeah. Yep. So let's yeah, just... I, th- I, I think... Um, What's the best uh, way to establish? The best way to establish yourself <coughs> in your new area. Um, so there are 10 or 11. So you know, it's all around. First thing is attraction agent, Tom. You speak better than anyone I know about that. But be the sort of person that the community wants to deal with and all the good agents that I know and Troy you and I get to work with every day and Tom you interview all the time they're all embedded in the community they're adding value Mm. so I think that can be done by anyone at any time get in find out how can you add value to your community and it's a bit like you know ask what I can do for you before what you can do for me so I think that's really key. Um, second thing is interesting, David Imrie, who's just rejoined us after 10 years. Why is that name familiar? He used to, work, used to work for Di Jones, then he yeah. worked for us. Yeah. Very successful agent with us. 10 years ago, decided he wanted to break from the industry and yeah. he got out and he's done a few other things. Just come back to us. Fantastic guy. And I had Paddington him. area. Uh, well, he was. He's now moved to our new town office. Okay. So inner city. And uh, doing really great. He's got four listings after the first two or three weeks back, yeah. having been out of the game for 10 years. And I said to him, I was doing a coaching or well, I won't say coaching because he's a genius at what he does we were having a, a business catch-up today and I said to him so David you know where'd your four clients come from he said well the first one blah 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 came from here and he said you know this person Gary who's a solicitor I said yeah he said well he sent it to me I said oh that's great I said so you know is he your solicitor he said no no but he says as you know I said a lot of business with him 10 years ago and I said yeah that was 10 years ago he said yeah but I've kept in touch for the last 10 years mm. so mm. even out of the industry he was keeping in touch with all his important contacts and relationships, and, and they're all flowing back to him because he made the effort. So, so you're talking about connectors, influencers that you know you've had relationships. Who are your Garys, yeah. solicitors, accountants, and whoever? Yeah. Um, third one, past clients, and I, th- I can't remember if I used this in a previous podcast, but the metaphor I heard fairly recently was um, looking for new clients and not contacting your old clients is like trying to fill a bath with the plug out. Yep. Mm. 
you we'll spend see. all we'll this see. effort to bring new clients in, and yet all these other people that you've got valuable relationships are just drifting away. And I think it's a great metaphor. So um, that was just a good example of David. You know, he, he's a connector sort of guy, and 10 years out of the industry, he's back and he's in momentum after a month because he built relationships. So relationships really key. Um, you know, we just we spoke recently on a podcast about digital footprints, and you know, I think obviously social media and Facebook and LinkedIn. But I think it would be a reasonable expectation to also understand that um, it will take a. Um, you know, it's not going to happen in thirty days that you're going to be the most dominant agent in a new marketplace. Yeah, well, you won't be the most dominant, but you can be active. Right. Yeah. And the next one, Tom, I was going to mention is uh, open properties for inspection. Yep. Be active. Be active. Right. Go, someone yeah. in your office, I assume, has probably got between them half a dozen listings that they're not able to open this weekend. And you can go and, and without any cost, if it's on REA, you can go and REA, put an open for inspection time, Saturday morning, put an A-frame board out at 8 a.m. if the councils allow you to, out there, put a flag up outside the board, and by 12 o'clock that day, you could have met 25 people at an open for inspection. Statistics tell us five of them, or about 20%, are in the process of selling in the next 90 days. Mm. So I think be active. Um, Bressick Whitney does a great job buyer servicing too, mm. especially with their new agents. Yep. So you know they say, look, you know, right now you don't have a big client base, but you can service a lot of buyers. So I think you know Shannon and Ivan have done a fantastic job being well, a culture of over servicing buyers. Well, they're they're very intelligent to understand that even though a vendor makes a listing decision at this point down here that they're actually dealing with people way before that. And sometimes they're dealing with people as a buyer years before they actually make that decision. So I think that's uh, been their strategy. And of course, they also work in a marketplace that it's a very fluid marketplace. I mean, people buy and sell there within you know a couple of years. They're in and out of marketplaces and people right. change their mind about what they're doing. But even if month. they're not selling for 10 years, they're going to dinner tonight with someone who's going to sell Correct. for three months. Yeah. So the whole thing is around network. So, you know, let's try and summarise a little bit of this for our second one is, is one is get active open properties for inspection. Um, um, embed yourself in the community and start adding value immediately. Over-service buyers in general, not just at open for inspections, but really get on the buyer trail because there's not too many people giving buyers attention nowadays, unfortunately, they should. Um, look at social media, but don't rely on it, but look at social media as a good way to launch yourself through LinkedIn, your company's LinkedIn, your LinkedIn accounts, and you can do a few things there. Uh, I think they're all, all key, but just get active in the market. Yeah. And as soon as you can get some ads in the local paper and some ads on REA, because as you say, Tom, someone thinking of selling a property in Newtown, guaranteed they're going to REA Newtown, they're picking up the local paper, and they're saying, well, who's, who's kind of like in the game? Who's mm. doing some activity? So the more activity you can get from a marketing perspective to strongly represent your properties, that does attract, and we know the local paper for years, Tom, has been a, a, a huge way of attracting people into uh, into the market. I would also look at the first couple of appraisals, taking the senior agent with me. Yeah. Yeah. So having them being part of you actually helps with testimonies about previous sales. Gives you a little bit more social proof on authority as well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. go in with point. that senior person for the first three months. Yeah. And I encourage a lot of my younger agents that are coming through that are rookie, that are trying to establish themselves in a new area, to go out with the senior agent yeah. and use it as a 50-50 yeah, split. Yeah, well said. Troy, well uh, I think what we're seeing here is whether you're an experienced agent going into a new market area, whether you're a new agent going into a new market area, it seems to overlap. This person needs to get um, high market concentrated activity yep. in all areas, in attraction, in chase, in influence, in community. We're talking about doing massive amounts of meeting lots of people and showing them that you're a good person and it's hard working. And I'm pretty sure that if you've been a successful agent in another marketplace, you've actually got a template to be successful. 100%, or in another industry, Tom, yeah. it could well be. We know Brian Whiteman was very successful and he used to be in bikes and other people used to be, you know, Tringali used to be a local accountant, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He would have been a bad accountant, for sure. I'm th I actually, thank God he's out of that industry. I actually asked Tringali the other day, <laughs> we were talking about it, I said, Michael, by the way, what are your accounting qualifications? <laughs> <laughs> I actually asked And which serial did you get them on? <laughs> All righty, thank you, realestate.com.au. Thank you so much. You've had two podcasts that were also video podcasts. We're going to go back to my preferred method, which is <laughs> audio. I don't mind the video. Troy, it's okay for you, brother. <laughs> Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. See you.